I'm a beekeeper, I'm interested in bees, but I'm also interested in sharing that joy with other people. Roar as well, we're looking for livelihood projects. A light bulb went on in my head because I'm a member of South Gloucestershire Beekeepers Association and they have a long association with bees abroad. They work to alleviate poverty in developing countries. It is like a whole big story which is going to change the life of the people economically. This bee family came in and we started a pilot. Bees abroad want to know whether something's feasible at first. We did visits to the villages to see who would be interested in beekeeping. And the first one we went to, Corriboma, was where, <laughs> where three of our trainers come from. They all stepped forward. They were actually honey hunters. And that was the only means of people getting honey in this region. There was no history of beekeeping. Before we are collecting honey from the trees, we use fire at night, burn them down, collect the water from them and that have changed. Have to prepare hives, to have to place some wax in the hives to attract the bees to come in. To come in. The bees help pollination especially the flower trees. So we have to look after them if we want to get more fruit or food to eat. We help to increase on the yield of agriculture, food in our community. Those initial seven hives were put as close to these wild bee nests as possible and baited and we were pleased to hear several weeks after our return that the first bees had gone into a hive. From that point we have done a lot of training and we have empowered a lot of community with beehives. We returned in November 2017 to run two training courses for men and women. Usually husband and wife, so they worked as teams, but that meant there was 20 more hives sighted. All the trainees on the course will see the whole process from building a hive, putting a hive in, in the bush, and then they'll go to an older hive, get some honeycomb out, and then they'll be shown the whole process of turning that honeycomb into honey and beeswax. We went to look at all the hives and yes, they had bees in, but it was very early days with a lot of them. The one in Semabu, they were very strong and they did have some honey. That also meant we could show people being trained what the end product was. They were amazed at what it looked like because it was clear, it looked clean, and it tasted good. The levels of poverty are quite extreme here. Sierra Leone is never out of the bottom 10, any which way you look at it on poverty indices. You've got to demonstrate something is successful before they sacrifice the time that they would have spent gathering food for their family. <laughs> First, I'm going to take the uh, gable and I'm going to make the entrance for the bees. We do 
loan the community with high but soft loan you are not going to give money to us you will give us honey then the hive is free for you anytime we harvest now it is for you we now use wood for hives which of course means felling trees we've now introduced a policy where for every tree that's felled seven saplings are planted somewhere to replace that We've now trained village beekeepers from each of the villages that Rory's Well is associated with. So that side of it is complete and we're now moving on to increasing production and to creating a proper honey market within Sierra Leone, which doesn't exist at the moment. Because the other thing I found on our trip, honey for sale in the supermarket in Bo, the nearest big city, was all from the States. We can produce good quality honey. We can produce mosquito repellent, lotions, cream. These are all a very good product coming from the honey, which we, we thought it would be a future business for us. Making body lotion. One part of melted wax, two for part of this oil now. What we are now working towards is setting up small enterprises within each village, particularly on the uh, production of beeswax creams that will feed into a microfinance scheme. Getting that money into the village means that it's available for people to take out on a loan basis so they can meet sudden medical bills, costs of school equipment. They may need it to buy seed for their farm or set up their own small enterprise. Fatimata is uh, someone we trained with her husband on that first training in November 2017. Unfortunately, her, her husband died and she's come forward to actually now be part of the B team to work on the creams and lotions as a means of earning, earning income. She said she wants to follow Abu and others to go and sell so that she can know the business, she will get some idea and she will, it will benefit her tomorrow. So that's her hope right now. Products can be sold in, in village directly, you know, queues form as soon as you've got some to sell. But there are also local markets where people take their, the produce from their farms to be sold. We are in a village called Mwala. They have a local market there. And we are here today to sell the product. And the people really they love the product, especially the names. Yeah, it's really, really in high demand.